and welcome to Work Reimagined, streaming live on ThinkTech Hawaii and brought to you from Honolulu, Hawaii. Why do we need to reimagine work? Well, as we know, we're facing massive disruptions in our labor markets due to automation and now the pandemic. What is work going to look like as we return to some type of normal after the pandemic? And how will automation affect the kinds of skills we're going to need for the jobs of the future? On Work Reimagined, I talk to innovators and entrepreneurs who are creating innovative solutions that help us navigate the effects of these disruptions while making a positive social impact in people's lives. I'm Ruby Menon, your host, and my guest today is Sasha Plotitsa, the CEO and founder of Former, and that's spelled F-O-R-M-R. And Sasha is truly a social entrepreneur. His mission is to give second chances and a fresh start to formerly incarcerated men and women to create his furniture designs that are built from recycled construction waste. Now, did you get them? His vision tackles two very important social challenges and inspires his mission to create clever designs with a purpose, objects with conviction. I just love that. Uh, Sasha, so I'm so excited to have you on the show. Aloha and welcome. Aloha. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Well, you know, it's so interesting how I found you. I'm an avid reader of Fast Company magazine. And of course, they did an article on you. And when I saw that you were working with people who were transitioning from prison to our communities, I felt like I had to reach out because as you know, I also have an inmate art project that I work with. I've been, uh, I've launched it uh, about five or six years ago. And what we do is we work with artists who are transitioning from prison to the community and we help them market and sell their artwork so that they can earn some money for their transition back to their communities. And so I felt like there was a kindred spirit in terms of, you know, what you're doing and what we were doing. And so I, I'm super excited to just be talking to you about this amazing uh, social enterprise that you have. I know it's a business at the same time, though, uh, you are really uh, tackling two huge, huge problems. And so I'm excited to learn a little bit more uh, about the company, but I'd like to start with you and if you can give us a sense of your career trajectory, uh, what led you to create Former and to create this, this amazing concept that you have with Former? So I, I, I've always had a passion for design. So I, I, as a kid, I used to draw a lot. Um, I drew, I came from Russia when I was seven years old. So oh. um, during the Cold War era. So I experienced a lot of, um, a, lot of, a lot of name call, calling, let's say. And so I would get away, just kind of get away from that through my art. And so I would draw uh, all the time and draw my family members. And um, so I kind of developed that passion for, for art initially and as a kid. And then I knew I was going to go into the arts as a, as a career. And so I studied uh, industrial design in, in college. And uh, for those that don't know what that is, that's the design of objects. So um, mm -hmm. when I was in college, I remember thinking, okay, I'm gonna design the first cool looking computer uh, because back then they were all just kind of gray beige, beige boxes that you know, with nobody focused on design. It was more about the performance. And then um, Apple came out, came out with the iMac. Um, I don't know if you remember that, that translucent iMac. Yeah, they kind of they kind of start putting uh, design on the map, you could say, for the for the lay person. Um, but anyway, so I kind of after college, I went off and I did um, everything from graphic design to web design to industrial design. Um, I did. I, uh, I had a signage company. Um, all of these ventures were for myself. I did. I started all these businesses and. So I, I, I like to explore into at, into different different uh, directions, mm -hmm. and um, and so one of those experiences was uh, a cannabis dispensary, and um, mm -hmm. so I learned a lot there, um, and um, and another those another one of those experiences was interior design, um, and and I think that's kind of where things 
uh, kind of stemmed from there, uh, from those experiences that connect that I connected into former. But that's kind of how I got, you know, that my background, a little bit about my background. So, I mean, you could have stayed with interior design or some type of, you know, in terms of your, your career trajectory. Uh, it seems like you took a little bit of a, a, a turn. Did something happen or something inspire you to make that, that shift? And especially because you came, I guess, from the cannabis dispensary world, uh, which is actually a little bit different, yeah, from your, <laughs> your original path. So you kind of took a little zig and zag there. Um, but what, how did that trend, how did you make that transition into this uh, formalizing former and creating this, this business? So in the cannabis world I was involved in, uh, I never thought I would be involved in that just kind of, um, was an opportunity that, uh, came across, um, my lap, so to speak. And so I did that for about 10 years and, oh. uh, through very tumultuous times, um, on the federal level, uh, the federal government ended up. Uh, closing down uh, the dispensary that we had opened. And um, even though we were completely legal um, on a city and state level, mm -hmm. uh, but they went after us because it was not, uh, cannabis was, as we all know, is still not federally legal. Um, yeah. So we basically, uh, through that experience, I saw how, um, how uh, incarceration affects, affects people. And, you know, a lot of people had their, legal businesses taken away from them at that time. Mm -hmm. um, ours, was, ours was one of them. Mm -hmm. um, and so if people all of a sudden ha now have records and they uh, are in prison and, you know, for different things, you know, even across the country, people uh, get in prison for uh, just non-violent uh, drug offenses and then they have mm -hmm. to come out of prison and they have to start over. And mm -hmm. with a record, it's it's uh, frequently very hard to start over because as you're trying to find a job and start, you know, find a place to live and um, it's as you're looking for a job specifically, um, you're filling out that application and they ask you, you know, do you have a history um, uh, and, and with uh, being incarceration? And so they so, you know, people have to check that box and um, so it, it prevents a lot of people from um, from getting employment. And so mm -hmm. um, I was going through this time, we, we were closed down and I was going through a little bit of a midlife crisis, you could say. And mm -hmm. I was trying to figure out a new career path. And I really, you know, as you mentioned, I kind of stepped away from design for a while. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to get back to it. And I wasn't sure what, what that would look like, but I knew I wanted to do design. And I wanted to have it be a socially responsible uh, venture. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I had no idea how to connect those two together. So I kind of was, I was doing these crazy searches on Google for the 10 worst problems in the world and trying to find the connection between the design and these problems. And I couldn't find anything. And, but I was in that sponge mode trying to figure out a, a, some, some, um, some opportunity or some some something that can't, would come together and i well, i remember i was on instagram and i was um just looking on instagram and but and i came across a post of a coffee table i think and mm -hmm. it kind of stuck with me and i thought um oh, maybe i could make furniture um and i just kind of thought well maybe there's something there but how do i make it a socially responsible uh, venture and that's kind of when I started putting the pieces together and I thought back to my time in interior design when I would go to the job site every few days and, um, and I would see these big piles of waste that would be hauled away every couple of days. And I could not believe it. And I remember because my father's a contractor, I, I was working with him at the time. And I remember asking him, what happens to all this construction waste? And he said, oh, it just goes to the landfill. He goes, you know, you can't do anything about it. You're, all, you're always going to have cut off materials when you're building, you know, when, in construction. So um, that's just the nature of construction. And mm -hmm. I kind of, uh, he had been doing this for decades. So he didn't even give it another thought at the time, but it kind of stuck with me, obviously, at this point when I was thinking, well, maybe I can connect with contractors and access their, their, their construction waste and repurpose it into building material, into furniture materials. 
and, and use that to build the furniture out of. And so I thought about that and I thought, okay, that sounds good. How do, but how do I make it even more impactful? Um, and so that's kind of when I turned to the workforce and I thought about um, how, who can I provide an opportunity to that is um, an, a group, a segment that is underserved. And that's, again, thinking back to my experiences in, in uh, cannabis and seeing people coming out of prison and trying to start over. And um, so I thought maybe I can connect with people that, in the reentry world that are trying to come back and, and have a fresh start and they need opportunities. And um, a lot of them get taught to use uh, a wood shop as a trade, mm -hmm. uh, to learn how to use tools. So I thought that there would be, you know, kind of made sense to connect that with my mission. And so that's kind of how I put those two pieces together. Um, and, um, and then, you know, started from there. And uh, it, it took me more than two years of uh, very, it was a heavy lift. Uh, let, we could say, we, let's, let's just say that it was a lot of work to put, make the connections on, on both sides, what, on the reentry world and on the, in the uh, materials world. Uh, but finally I decided, okay, I'm ready to do this and I'm going to launch. And I launched last year, March 11th, actually a day from tomorrow's going to be the birthday. Oh my uh, gosh. Yeah, so wow. uh, and that's the timing was not ideal, as, as we all know now, but um, that's how it came to be. You know, that's super. I, I mean, I, I really hats off to you because I've worked with the prison population and it is really, really, really tough. Um, and I think what what's so fascinating to me is that you've you're 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 really looking at two humongous social challenges that we're you know we've been grappling with for years and and hardly make a dent in and the 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 connecting point for me is that you're working with materials that are discarded but in a sense inmates you know people who are transitioning from prison are also being discarded by society where they're not being given an opportunity or a chance. And what people don't realize is that there is so much untapped talent in our prisons. And I know this for a fact, just from working with the artists that are coming out of prison. I'm sure you've probably seen the same thing in terms of the types of uh, uh, skill sets. And a lot of people have like those hardcore skill sets, like, you know, welding and carpentry and, you know, those types of things. And they do learn those things in the prisons actually if they're you know uh they get lucky enough to get into a program so what's so inspiring to me is the fact that you have taken two you know like the human side and the and the material side that are both being discarded and somehow figured out a way of putting it together and i that is just brilliant <laughs> and uh i'm quite sure that uh, it, it's probably been really, really tough with, you know, launching during COVID because that's not a normal business cycle, obviously. Um, so I was curious as to find out um, what has that trajectory been like for you this past year um, in terms of any success stories that you can talk about or um, even like how is the market responding to your products? And, um, you know, I'd love to be able to show a, a photo of uh, one of your workers um, in your in your wood shop. And then there's, um, you know, I really uh, wanted to show our listeners also some of the design pieces, because what's really striking about your design line is the they're, they're very um, I don't know if it's minimalist. Is that the right word, or how would you describe your stuff? <laughs> minimalist? No, that's a great word. Um, I would say geometric. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of the designs are limited by by the materials, and so when I design, you know, when I try to come up with a design, it's always around the limitations or the constraints of the materials that we're working with. Um, so that's kind of, I guess, I could say another challenge. Um, to designing and coming up with these solutions. And typically I, I look at the design, I, I kind of look, explore the, I redefine the concept. So when mm -hmm. I, when I look at the design, I think about how do I 
um, reapproach the, the the object from a different perspective. And so mm -hmm. a lot of these designs end up being, having multiple functionalities to them, like that table that we just looked at, uh, that's got a little vase in the center of the, of the table that uh, mm -hmm. um, that whole that you can put uh, plants in. Yeah, that's uh, one of my favorite. So yeah, so it, it's uh, but as far as the uh, the workforce, um, you, you hit the nail on the head. I think um, there's a psychological um, barrier there. Uh, people um, are coming out, and they, you know, a lot of them have had a pretty rough um, childhood, mm -hmm. growing up in in, in um, poverty, or and have had other challenges, um, and so they have. Uh, kind of low self worth, um, what just throughout life, and and mm -hmm. especially coming out now, they feel like um, I think uh, you you put it nicely, uh, feeling discarded. Um, they they they're starting over, yeah. and they you know society doesn't necessarily accept them, and so we um, that's kind of one of the challenges is is giving them uh, a support system and, and helping. Besides the job itself, is I also try to, you know, talk to them and say, you know, I my door is open to you if you have any challenges or issues that you, you're uh, dealing with. And and as you know, there are plenty. Um, yeah. There are plenty of challenges for us um, that are that have not uh, dealt with incarceration, but on top of uh, on top of that, we they're starting over and trying to find a new place to live. And, and, and the, uh, frequently um, one of the experiences I've had is uh, because when people are released from prison, they end up um, on parole and typically in some kind of a shelter or halfway house. And so they mm -hmm. have to stay there for a period of time. So maybe six months or, or, or longer. And so they, uh, but they're re released, not necessarily where they're from. And so for example, there might be somebody working, uh, living in San Francisco, but they're originally from Southern California. Um, and so when their parole is, is, is finished, they, they'll typically want to move on to, you know, go back home. Uh, so uh, on top of the fact that it's extremely expensive to live here in the Bay Area, as you know, um, it's, it's, um, they're, they want to go back. And so on top of the you know, finding a, a place to live and and staying sober and staying out of um, crime and and having a good job and the support system. There are so many things um, that that are they're confronted with that it's it takes a lot of uh, focus and uh, determination to to get through it all. Yeah. Um, and so I, I um, my I've had I've been like I said I've been. It's been a year. It's going to be a year tomorrow, and mm -hmm. we've gone through about five or six employees already um, mm -hmm. that have just, for one reason or another, have not worked out. Um, and COVID definitely was was one of those uh, reasons. Um, I had to furlough my second employee, and then when I brought him, invited him back, uh, he got had gotten another job. So mm -hmm. uh, for, COVID definitely did not help the situation, but yeah. Um, they're resilient, you know. These guys are resilient, and they're 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 powering through. And um, one of these, one of the, uh, my employees, Gary, um, he's actually uh, found his passion for art uh, while while in prison, and that kind of got him through. Um, he he had been there for uh, over forty years, I think, um, and he got out, and um, now he's got a show. At, he's part of a show at the. Uh, Museum of Modern Art in New York, and he's doing a lot of good stuff. And oh. and he, you know, he's starting over, but it's uh, he's doing well. And and um, I, there there are a lot of stories like that. Yeah, uh, and I can attest to some of those stories too. We had a similar uh, story where we hired uh, one of our in, one of the inmates that we were working uh, with uh, while he was in prison. And uh, he's now doing artwork for our nonprofit, WorkNet, and he does phenomenal work. And, uh, you know, I've been able to help him put his work in art galleries and 
Uh, every time we go to different shows and things like that, his stuff always sells out. So, you know, there's right. there's so if people are willing to help them and give them a chance, uh, it's just amazing, you know, what a little bit of that empathy and um, some heart into that situation can really transform somebody's life. So uh, I completely know what you're talking about. And, you know, and it is, it is a little, you've got to put a lot more skin in the game as an employer, most definitely, you know, because it does mean that there are, you know, there in general life, life situations hit all of us, right? But for this population, it's that much more difficult because right. of all the things that you were talking about. You know, we take a lot of things for granted, like ID documents, for example, you know, we think, oh yeah, you know, we've got our birth certificate, we've got our ID, you know, driver's license, all that. Well, these people, they come out, they don't have anything. Now imagine trying to do anything in the world without any of your ID documents. You can't, you know, Absolutely. you're hamstrung. So it does take a little bit more effort, but to me, when you see somebody's life transform like that and you feel like you've been able to help and nurture that, it's, it's, such, it's such a rewarding feeling. So, you know, I really want to uh, they, say, they, yeah, say hands off, hats off to you for, for putting that, 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 you yeah. know, that heart into it. Thank you. And they, uh, some of these guys have been in prison literally for 20, 30, 40 years. Yeah. And you can, you can imagine how, many, how much uh, change we've gone through in that period of time. I mean, let alone last 10, 10 years, you know, it's, so they're coming out and starting over at this time is, um, not easy. Um, and, but they're, you know, powering through and they're, they're appreciative of, of the, the mission and, mm -hmm. um, I'm giving them, uh, out of the employees that have been here, I think four of them have come out and this is their first, first job. Um, and you could say, you know, 30, 40 years. Um, and so they're appreciative of, of that opportunity. So I was wondering a little bit more on the business side. Um, how how's the market been responding to your products and how do you get the word out there in terms of, you know, the fact that not only you're selling these products, but then also about the, the socially conscious mission that you're spearheading? Well, you touched on uh, Fast Company. Um, they're people have been very excited about the story. Um, I've always felt like this story was, um, uh, there's a not, there's a lot of, a lot of good content behind the story and, and it's, uh, people, uh, you know, uh, writers have taken on the story and they've, um, done a good job of uh, representing the brand and, you know, and customers and, whether they're customers or just people who read the stories are reaching out to me and, and saying, mm -hmm. Hey, you know, completely support what you're doing, what you're doing, mm -hmm. uh, keep at it. And, um, a lot of positive, um, a lot of positive, positive responses and, uh, feedback has been uh, coming forward since, since, uh, there's been more, more, more and more press over the last uh, couple of months. So people have been very receptive to it. I was wondering also, you know, when I'm thinking about the future of work, uh, a lot of the research is showing that, you know, everybody's going to have to deal with uh, learning digital skills, computer skills. And the unfortunate thing about it is that the prisons are really not training our ex uh, inmates to come out with any of those types of technical skills. Uh, and it's truly unfortunate. I mean, I've heard so many stories of they walked in maybe with a flip phone and then they come out and they look at these iPhones and they don't know what the heck to do with them, you know, because they're so foreign to them, right? Because they don't, they don't get a chance to work with any of this technology. So in terms of training your people, um, do you find that they already have a lot of the skill sets or do you have to do a lot of training in order to get them up to speed to be able to create the, the, the designs that you're doing? And um, are you utilizing any type of computer technology that you have to train them on? So uh, for the most part, I look for people with uh, some uh, skill set and, and some experience with fabrication in the wood shop. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, in the future, I'd love to be able to uh, train people as well. And mm -hmm give that kind of give them a jump start to their um, new life and, and the, 
their career mm -hmm. uh, at this point or just too small to sustain that, to sustain yeah. a training process and starting from scratch. Uh, so at this point, I'm definitely looking for people with experience, mm -hmm. um, whether it's while being in prison, while in prison or prior to prison, um, they uh, ideally have experience with the, with the tools. Um, and the equipment. Um, as far as uh, computers, uh, you're right. That's definitely one of the challenges is that um, they're not comfortable with uh, with computers and 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 the smartphones. Um, mm -hmm. and, but we do have a CNC machine, uh, which I don't know if you know about that. But basically, mm -hmm. it, you put in a you, a program, you a CAD program, let's say. Oh yeah. You des mm -hmm. design something, and you. You put the file into the into the CNC machine, and then it cuts out the shape automatically by itself. Mm -hmm. uh, you might have seen videos of this, um, but basically, um, it it does the work for you. And so, that's something that we're trying to introduce uh, right now. Um, mm -hmm. And um, it's we're not quite there yet, but um, for myself as well, you know, I need to brush up on it, but. Um, but hopefully we'll get to a point where we teach that skill as well, uh, because that's as you know, uh, as we progress technologically, that's going to be more and more common um, to, to be able to use that kind of machine. Now, are you using 3D printing at all? Is that uh, something that you're thinking or you haven't you're not using? Right no, now? Are no, you thinking really. about it at some point? Um, not in the cards at the moment. Um, I don't know that I'm not that familiar with it, but I think um, when you're working with that, you're limited to that material that, that runs through the printer, which is yeah, plastic. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it kind so of that gets would away. defeat your purpose. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah, that as would make sense. I know, there's nothing that can be that would work within our material, but uh -huh. I'd, I'd like to expand our technology down the road and work with besides wood, work with tile and concrete and um, other things as well, but that's, you know, that's a little bit ways down the road. Wow. Well, Sasha, I, I would love to talk to you for another hour about this because it's such a, <laughs> this is so fascinating and, uh, truly, uh, I just admire so much of what you've done, uh, to, 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 uh, I mean, just the fact that you put these two social challenges together and found a way of making it work is, is truly creative. So, in my Thank book, you. you're like social entrepreneur uh, on steroids. <laughs> because usually people, you know, they, they choose one thing or the other. It's either sustainability or social justice, but you marry the two. So that, that's super creative. Thank um, you. Yeah, Appreciate so uh, you're very welcome. And thank you for, you know, giving these folks an opportunity uh, to make some really, really cool stuff and for such a great story as well. So really want to uh, you know, say thanks for you to, to put all that skin in the game and the heart that you have. Um, now, I just wanted to direct our listeners to your website, which is theformer.com. So that's T-H-E-F-O-R-M-R.com. Now, where else can people find you? Uh, well, Are you there's, on social media or anything? Yeah, yeah. There's uh, on Instagram. It's the former um, mm -hmm. on Facebook. The former, and again, there's no e in the former. Okay. Um, yeah. So that's those are the typical uh, paths to to former. Okay. Well, your Instagram account is cool. I I follow you. So uh, I, uh, whoever's you. doing it is doing some great stuff. Um, so Try I want to. What's that? We're trying to keep it interesting. It's it's yeah, not easy. Yeah, well, good stuff out there, but we're trying. You are, you are. Um, so I want to thank you so much, Sasha, for joining me today and telling us more about the former and your story and just keep up the good work. I know it's hard, but you're you're doing it. And uh, uh, I'm hoping that you know people will take some interest in in the work and then you know be able to purchase some of your products because at the end of the day you got to sell product right so that's what matters <laughs> to yeah. keep the doors open exactly. um yeah so thank you sasha for joining me and thank you all for being here uh, please check back for our next show on wednesday march 24th at 3 p.m until next time be safe and take care of one another aloha <laughs>